Do you ever, and be honest, I'm not going to judge you. Okay. Do you ever actually look at the map before you read a fantasy book? Not before. I usually do it after. Why do I do that? I don't know. I just forget. I see <laughs> I see map. Scroll past it. <laughs> I feel like we've had this conversation before. As someone who has given... Because I mean, look at the title. If you don't, if you don't know what we're talking about, and you just click, that's kind of beautiful. <laughs> Very brave of you. Today we're going to be talking about a continuation, a 1.5 of the book Powerless. Mm-hmm. And I do want to say, as someone who gave it a 2.5, I fucking love this book and this series yes. so much. Queen, Queen Lauren Roberts, you give you give me this shit. You give me this shit, I'm not looking at it. <laughs> She's showing the map. My whole mind, when I think of cities, neighboring cities, and all that shit, mm-mm, they're all in a straight line. Oh, yes. I, I love that. You told me you're going northwest to go through the scorches. Don't bring, don't bring direction into that. <laughs> don't talk about compasses with also, me. Also, did you notice that there's like little dragons in the ocean? Little. Obviously not. <laughs> Are there? Just kidding. Hmm. What the fuck is that? that I know. It's is like, that the okay. tail or the head? Yes. No, it's the tail. Obviously. Are you but sure? But does that mean there's like, it, like beasts in the book? Why have we not talked about any beasts? I don't get it. Also, she breaks down all of the p- abilities that are in um the book. But if she doesn't cover all the abilities, I'm going to be so angry. Mm. I need to see all these abilities in use. If you're showing me... I need to see it. Yeah. It just kind of feels like I'm just one girl. Like if you tell me that something is the way it is, but you don't show me, then I forget. (laughs) She's out of of my mind. Yeah. I'm the same way. So I won't read a map before or after. You never read the map? No. Hell no. I don't believe that. Unless it's something I deeply care about. Mm. Which I do deeply care about this, but you don't, you haven't gripped me, Lauren. But I feel like this map is so simple to understand. So it's not like a big, it's not a big deal. I get it. Did you see the three fatals? What's considered the three that like the king will fuck you up. What is it? Controller, which you can manipulate others. A mind reader. And a silencer. Some other abilities of others. Sense and use others' abilities within proximity wielder. Which I'm pretty sure that's what Kai is. Yeah. Okay, so if you haven't read Powerless, which is the first book, mm-hmm. I would recommend. I mean, yeah, I know. Yeah, I'm, I would recommend that you read it because I'm. We're not gonna describe everything, well, actually, if anything. Why don't you just say like a really one minute summary of the book right now? Powerless. Go. Okay. First, welcome to the Book Fix Podcast, a podcast where we fix lives one book at a time. I'm your host, Yahida. And I'm your host, Shelly. And on this podcast, we love to talk to the girlies who have read the book, who have any discussion questions, who want to talk about it. But we also love the girlies who have no intention of reading it and just want to be here for the vibes. Everyone is welcomed, okay? So I'm going to start off by giving a very brief summary of Powerless. Powerless is a YA fantasy story about our main character Peyton Gray who is an ordinary doesn't have any powers but she masks herself as a mundane which is like the the basic powers you know they're just like whatever and she pretends to be a psychic but mostly she's a thief and Mm. she is living in a world where the kingdom kills off ordinaries you know the ones without powers yeah and our other main character is Kai, who is the king's enforcer. Yes. So he is in charge of basically getting rid of all the ordinaries. And he's also going to be in charge of being the king's enforcer, who is going to be his brother, Kit. So, so right now he's just the prince. Every year they have these. Tr- not every year. Every now and then they have the purging, which is supposed to emulate the plague that broke out and killed off the ordinaries and gave the elites their powers. But specifically this one, the king really wants Kai to win to kind of solidify that he is the next enforcer. Mm -hmm. So because our main character, Peyton Gray, saves Kai in a random attack that happens in the slums where she lives 
she is also put into these trials. So yeah, there was a list that came out and she was on the list. And so now everyone on the list has to go to the purging and you don't have to kill each other, but it's very like Hunger Games esque. <laughs> so yeah. some do die. And at the end, who wins? I'm not sure. Wait, are we not spoiling? Oh, well, I guess we have to because of this one. So at the end of Powerless, their last thing was a maze. And at the end of the maze, Adina was there. Which is Peyton's best friend. And at the end of this maze, you're supposed to kill the person that's at the very end of the maze because apparently they're they're a criminal that has done things against the kingdom. And Peyton can't believe that this is what's happening. She doesn't want to kill Adina, but then another character named Brooke. Blair. Blair. Thank you. Another character named Blair runs up and kills Adina instead. But because of all of this, you know, our main character, Peyton, runs away. King, or I don't know what happened. King ends up with her. King reveals that there is no plague. He just, it's better this way. Mm. Hella hurts her. But then she uh, kills the king and then Kai walks in and is like, you killed my dad, but I kind of have a crush on you. You better run. And she, she, she does. The end. Um, well, so. first, <laughs> major things to know is that she had assumed that the king had killed her dad. Oh, yeah. yeah. But he didn't. It was Kai. OK. Put a pin in that. No more pins. No more. Okay. You, I have a few. You I have said a, few. a lot of pins. A and then to be honest, I was lost. I was like, what pins? We never came back to this. <laughs> we never. Well, well, this one, we will. We will later. Put a pin in that because we're going to focus on Adina. So in book one, I will say, Lauren, I love you. I love you. I love oh Lauren. She's really sweet. Very. Uh, I don't think she did a good job in the first book making me care for Adina. You know what's weird? I did care about Adina, but not as strongly as I probably should have. Mm -hmm. So I was really sad when Adina was killed in Powerless. But I remember thinking to myself, I really wish that she would have fleshed out Adina's character, which I think Lauren probably had this exact same realization and was like, why don't I make a 0.5, a 1.5? So 1.5 is what happens to Adina between... Having Peyton there, Peyton getting chosen for the purging, and then her leaving with Peyton to become her seamstress. Yeah. So with this book, we start off with Adina. Yes. And it says five years ago. And it was basically their first meeting. So they grew up in the loot, which is basically the slums. And they have to steal to survive. And Adina isn't the best thief. No. She is... Which is crazy because she has the power to fucking walk through walls. Walk through. I feel like that would be the easiest way for you to get away. But whatever. But it's funny because she feels bad, too. So the whole time she's stealing, she's like yelling. I'm so sorry. I stole. I'm so sorry. I'm so like sorry. I just, I'm just really hungry. I really want these <laughs> sticky, sticky, buns. sticky buns. And so she's getting away from somebody and then manages to get away and i believe this is when she first meets Peyton Peyton Gray from the yeah. first book and Peyton's like dang you suck at stealing mm. she's like yeah well your clothes are ugly so Dude, who's really if so who's really who's really losing here if someone said that to me i'd be like um <laughs> bitch it's like okay Dude, like, fuck up that's wild so they become best friends cute and they have this basically a they have this agreement that Peyton, because she's such a good thief, that she would be the one in charge of stealing shit for them. And Adina, because she's such a good seamstress, she will make their clothes. Mm -hmm. And that's kind of the deal they have. Adina feels like she just really wants to live a simple life. Mm -hmm. it's, it's not like she's striving towards being rich. She just cares a lot about being a seamstress. Mm -hmm. I don't want to speak about this book in detail. So I'm just going to cut to the first point where she meets our other character okay go ahead isn't she in her shop because i remember they meet over this one shirt that he was trying to choose if he wanted in a specific color mm -hmm. right and i don't remember what two colors they were like going between but he was like wouldn't this shirt look better in this color and she's like no that's fucking ugly <laughs> that's ugly that's ugly i think he wanted it in red yeah and she was like no never <laughs> mm -hmm. I. 
really did not care. You didn't care about Makoto? At first, no. I didn't care about him. So when we're when we're in Makoto's perspective, he is like, oh my God, her name is on the death list. And I was so confused because I thought it was like a fucking obituary. Yeah. But it's actually the purging, the contestants that get to go to the purging. And so he sees a name and he's like, oh my God, her name is on the list. So she, he, he ends up seeing the contestants be like whisked away and he notices Peyton Gray. And he's like, wait a minute, I've seen Peyton Gray with that other girl right over there who has the shop. He goes over to Adina and that's when he's like, which shirt do I want? I don't know. And he basically strikes up a deal with her. That if she's willing to make an exact replica of, it's like a military outfit, right? Mm -hmm. For the ones who are in the castle. What does she get in return? He will sneak her in and she could say goodbye to Peyton or she could see Peyton. Okay. And she also has like unlimited food through him doesn't she yeah he will basically just keep bringing her sticky buns cinnamon buns cinnamon rolls i looked them up it's, it's basically buns. a cinnamon roll but different like made in a different consistency yeah but they call them sticky buns yes so i Isn't it crazy that that's the only thing she ate though i know I'm like there's no other food around here <laughs> no but they were in the slums and that's probably like cheap food yeah, but she really loved it, though. I mean, I don't blame her. I don't know. I if wish... I could live only off of cinnamon rolls and nothing would happen to my health. I think I would get tired of them. I would never. <laughs> I would never. No, my 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 point is, is why didn't they bring up any other food, even in the first book? It's only sticky buns. That's all yeah. they eat. Yeah. And it was funny because the first time in, in Reckless, when Peyton eats like fancy food, it talked about like, I ate beans. It's like frijoles. <laughs> <laughs> If, if I went to the fanciest place ever and they served me frijoles, I'm like, damn. I could eat this at home. <laughs> I could eat this at home. Uh huh. So, Dina, she is such a dependent character on Peyton. I didn't know how she was going to do without her. Mm -hmm. So it was interesting to see her kind of continue to move on with life mm -hmm. and be so positive after seeing like your best friend leave to basically get killed because mm -hmm. she Peyton doesn't have any powers or abilities so she but obviously she, isn't really gonna make it but she was so she's very optimistic though she's That's like crazy. no she will make it she's got oh my this gosh. I really wish there were more deep conversations between her and Makoto because anytime they spoke, it kind of just felt like she was always like, no, but everything's OK. And I get that she's supposed to be like sunshine, but it's like and he is the grumpy character. Look at the reality that you're currently living. Mm -hmm. Like you can't even walk out on your own without something bad happening. And that sucks that that's the and situation. I thought it was so funny because he he presents himself as having the same ability as her which is like you know walking through walls and shit mm -hmm. and she's just like whoa i've never met someone else who can do that and i thought it was so funny when he was like how come you're such a bad thief if you just walk <laughs> through walls and she was like well it's because i don't know what's on the other side of the wall and i'm scared <laughs> that <laughs> was so so, re so real honestly <laughs> I don't think I started liking Makoto until after the guys approach Dina when she's leaving his place. Because if you remember, she's leaving after having like built the frame of the entire outfit. And she's like, OK, tomorrow we're going to come in and we're going to do like the inside part now. But it's OK. Everything's going to be good. Everything's looking fresh. I'll be done in two days. She leaves and he's over here thinking like, dang. This girl's just stuck in my head, which is crazy because I haven't thought of anyone mm -hmm. except for my friend or except for Hera because we don't know what they are yet. Yeah. Who is in the purging now. Mm -hmm. So it's just so weird. And she comes back later, I think, after he has showered and she's like, can I stay here? Because there was some scary people over there and they said some really scary and threatening things to me and threatened to follow me home. So I ran back over here and he kind of makes a comment like they're not going to be a problem anymore yeah they're not going to be a problem anymore i was down i was down yeah. i fucking love the moments he would 
step out of his comfort zone to protect her because he himself seemed like a character that was very used to being in the background. Mm. And I thought, I assumed, and I have a lot to say about this, that he was going to be more vocal by the end of the book. I had the same feeling as you. Okay. And then I thought it, I thought that part was really cute too. I think I, I did like him, but knowing her fate, I didn't want to like him because I, I felt like, oh my God, he's probably going to be so broken and then I'm going to be sad about mm-hmm. it and then I'm going to see him again in the next book and I'm going to be sad about it. <laughs> it's just okay. going to be sad and depressing. I feel, but, I feel like talking about the plot of this book, we're going to finish in 10 minutes because there's one part that I think we're going to talk about a lot. Mm-hmm. So speeding forward a bit them building the outfit by the way she's staying with him now so she's staying at his house uh she gets unlimited sticky buns queen Mm -hmm. he's getting closer to her and he just she becomes one of his important people now so we start seeing him kind of feel conflicted like i don't know what to do now when it comes to the day that I have to leave. And she's like, what are you talking about? I'm going with you. And he's like, no, you don't get it. Like, I, I don't know what to do anymore. And we never really understand why just yet. I was rooting for him. But when he revealed his power, how did you feel? We'll be back after a quick break. Are you passionate about writing or just love the arts? Tune in to the Poetry Podcast with A. Discover the latest trends in the industry. Enjoy insightful book reviews. Participate in Q&As. Listen to captivating poetry readings. And get inspired by author interviews. We release episodes on the first three Thursdays of each month. Don't miss out. Come check us out at the Poetry Podcast with A. I was so shocked but i thought it was really really kind of impressive that he's managed to survive this long because yeah his power is a wielder just like kai in the first book he could have been an enforcer as well no doesn't isn't this a power that the king will kill you for or have you live with him remember you either become my son or get the fuck out. <laughs> because there was no mention of other potential enforcers, though. Because it's rare, isn't it? To be a uh, oh, to be a wielder. Yeah, uh, I'm assuming so, but I don't know. It never sta- it never stated it, so mm-hmm. I'm not sure. I thought honestly that his life was. He said his life was in danger. He said mm-hmm. that if they found out I was a wielder, then I would be killed. But she's like, you were going to use me, mm-hmm. use my power, go through that fucking wall, and then just leave me there. And what I didn't even understand what was Makoto's plan when he went in. He wanted to get Hera out. No. How would he do that? Mm, I'm not sure. (laughs) I don't really know. I'm not sure. uh, uh, Step one, face through the wall. Step two. High five. Step three, kiss maybe. I don't know. We'll talk about that one. Cousins. (laughs) No, I was talking about. I was hoping that Dina would also go through the wall. Step three, ask Dina if she went through the wall again. <laughs> Step four, go out and help Dina. <laughs> it's just like, how'd you feel about when Dina and Makoto first kiss? I, I thought don't it was remember. beautiful. I don't remember the first kiss. Can oh you remind gosh. me what happened? It was, they were already very heavily flirting. And it's funny because when Dina, in Dina's perspective, when she's the seamstress back at home and she's talking to the Payton's maid, it's always like, are you going to go see your guy? Are you going to go see your guy? She was in the castle yes. with Peyton now. She's mm-hmm. a seamstress now. And then he snuck in and he was working there now? No, no, no. He hadn't snuck in yet. It was just her telling everyone about the person that she visits on the weekends. So she would go back on the weekend, see him, and then come back and talk about him a lot. But she wouldn't tell Peyton specifically. Peyton didn't know about this guy. Mm-hmm. It's until she goes back and they're having a conversation. Fuck, I don't remember the beats of this, but I do remember the first time they kiss. It solidifies what they are. Mm -hmm. It solidifies that they're in a relationship. So 
when she's working in the castle, there are moments where he does sneak in to see her. Actually, you know what? They they kiss and then it's revealed that he's only siphoning her power so that she could he could break in and he wasn't planning on keeping her in a relationship. But then he feels really bad because he really does love her. Uh, honestly, I thought it was cute, but if if you want to look into it, go ahead. I don't really want to go that deep into it. Mm-hmm. I do want to say. Oh, I remember why I thought it was cute. Why? I thought it was cute because remember he cut her bangs. Yeah. She was like, my bangs are too long. And he was like, here, let me help you. And they were crooked, mm-hmm. which I kind of hated that. Never in the first book did Peyton notice her crooked bangs. No. So her bangs were crooked. And I think that's when he kissed her. Also. Or that might have not been the first kiss. I'm not sure. No, but that do, was the first. I kiss. do remember the crooked bangs being like a cute. Wait, I wanted to bring cute, something up. A cute little moment. It was really cute. Honestly, Makoto and Dina were so good. I really liked also when Dina would bring up every time he would smile because he didn't smile. He didn't often. smile much. Oh my god, so good, so good. If you want a man who never smiles, <laughs> I want a man that does smile. I oh. thought it was good that he was changing for her. The so thing this is, the thing that I did really like about Makoto was I felt like he was at a point in the beginning of the book where he kind of felt lost in his life because he was so close to Hera. Hera was his best friend, cousin, I think. And he was like, you know what? I just want to say goodbye to her. And what happens to me afterwards? I don't even fucking care. I don't care what happens to me. And it sucks. But then he meets Adina and then he realizes he does want something. He wants something. This is what I hate because you could see it structuring. I'm seeing Makoto starting off as a lost character and all of a sudden finding his voice and feeling like, you know, there is something to live for. I have Adina. I have me like I'm I'm worth more than I thought I was. I wanted to see more of that. So when the plan actually came through before before the plan, Adina was taken by the king. And was told that she was treasonous, but she wasn't really. And they... I was... You know what? I really was expecting, like, a reason. I don't know why. I was like, the the king's going to come in and be like, you remember that day when you stole my sticky buns? Yeah. Mm. You're done, girl. Off with your head. That never fucking happened. Dude, I felt so bad when they were breaking her fingers. I know. Oh, dude. Yeah, so they... And I think... They broke all her fingers. And they left them like that. Mm Mm-hmm. So when she's in the maze in the first book. It well, first, mention- when she's in the cell, she makes a friend. Oh, yeah. I really liked that moment because I thought it was so sad because she over here with her broken fingers. And then the other guy was just like, well, I've been here for a long time. I'm probably going to die today. She's just like, no, you're not going to die. And then she wanted to be his friend. And he was like, I don't want to make friends with someone who's going to die respectfully. Like, I just feel like, you know, I'll be really sad. Yeah, I I really like that she was able to have that a moment like that. I well, guess well, it just goes to show that she's so positive in all mm-hmm. like tough moments. Yeah, and that's what I loved about her character. Because I don't know if you read the dedication in this book, but this book was yeah. dedicated to the to softer girls. Yeah, with softer dreams, mm-hmm. and that's exactly what Dina was. And I just wanted. I just wanted more out of the people that she impacted. So the end of this book is the ending of the first book, which is Dina in the maze with her broken fingers. And she's given up. Like there's nothing else for her. She's so close to dying. She's experiencing that while Makoto is breaking in. It's the last maze and he wanted to watch. I don't remember why he wanted to watch the last trial. Oh, because he was supposed to meet Adina. Like they, oh, they were yeah. going to meet somewhere. I forgot where. And he just thought that maybe she slept in or something. And he was like, oh, I can just go to this last purging trial. And meet her there. And meet her there. I can. He he said that he could feel her power because it was like different from others. Mm-hmm. And so he was, like, he was like, I can feel her around. Like she feels close-ish. And that's when he sees her in the middle of the maze. And he watches her get killed 
I really like the last lines of this entire short story, short, short novel, novella. Thank you. <laughs> I say thank you, but I figured it out myself. <laughs> It's the last chapter of this novella, and it's Adina, and it says, In the end, it was all light and dark, loud and soft. I knew nothing but the memory of those I loved, one a friend, the other unfinished, and that alone is what I took with me into the next life. But I watched, warm and bright, and high above, just as he promised. Because he had promised that, Makoto had promised to Adina that when they both would eventually pass, they'd be stars in the sky together. Yeah. It was giving me um, Princess and the Frog vibes. So the end, Adina doesn't make it. It's so sad. Makoto's really sad. I think it describes that he screams in the the stage, or not the stage, the the seats. Yeah. And then I think so. And then the book ends in that Adina perspective, the chapter that I read. Here's what I don't like. Mm-hmm. I was so in it. I cried. I loved. I laughed. I lost. (laughs) I fucking assumed. And this is going to be kind of a weird in the middle episode because you really need to watch Reckless when we talk about it. I assumed Makoto would have had a chapter where he was like, you know what? Fuck this. I've always stood in the fucking sidelines. But fuck that king. Fuck these bitches. Peyton's still there. And Peyton... Honestly, everything I've heard about her, got to team up with her, that bitch. I love her. <laughs> That's what I wanted. Yeah. And it didn't happen. I really, really expected to see Makoto again. Or I thought, I honestly thought that he was going to play like a bigger role. Like that this was going to just give him this newfound purpose. He was going to be like, you know what? I cannot live another day with this like system you know of the ordinaries the leads the mundane so whatever i would have i would have loved if in reckless we would have had a chapter where the revolutionaries are all speaking and going like there's this new guy he's fucking insane that guy's a tank oh my god yeah, yeah he's so good he's so i don't like he doesn't have to be bubbly but i would have liked to see hope ignited in him for mm. change and when him and Peyton actually meet, he's wearing something that Adina made for him. Yeah. You know? That would have been really cute. I wanted that shit. I, I, I also have a complaint of... Ugh, this is might be... I don't know how you'll feel about this. Go ahead, Queen. But I just don't understand how come he didn't do anything i don't know i don't know like he has this like really huge power how come you didn't try to like fucking steal another power throw a fucking water ball at you know what i mean like why didn't you do anything at all it would have been nice to hear about the revolutionaries being like we actually found this guy fucking going crazy in the stage or the audience yeah grabbed him (laughs) because bitch was going off I don't know. I kind of expected him to try to try to intervene with what was happening with Adina. Like, if you love this girl so much, why aren't you saving her Mm -hmm. or trying to save her? Like, let's just say that you did try and somebody stopped you. That would have been nice to see. Mm -hmm. And I don't I don't I don't expect him to be bubbly. I think that would be out of character. I I just wanted him to have hope for a change. And if it was more like it's not that I want this, it's that it's what she would have wanted. Mm hmm you know yeah and if it's supporting Peyton and that's all he's ever wanted to do that's fine yeah I just wish that there would have been something for him but all we saw was him scream yeah I fucking hate that shit so Uh, here's how I would rewrite it (laughs) I just feel like it was so disappointing I think that this really did make me care more about adina i think it worked that i felt really sad that she i mean obviously i knew that she was gonna die but i did feel like damn there could have been so much that this character could have done for the revolution and it didn't it didn't happen because the fucking king fuck that guy can i parallel this to something in my life sure so there's this game series that i really like it's called yakuza Mm -hmm. and there's four thousand games for it and i'm currently on game seven love that i'm halfway i i really love the series but there's this thing that they do where in the series you in one game you play multiple characters so you play characters 
every different chapter and they're experiencing things at the same time as all the the characters that you're playing as but then the last chapter you play as all of them together and all their stories line up so they realize that they can't keep using the same characters like the main characters over and over again so they started adding side characters as main characters knowing that they'll never mention them again so you learn to love this character and you're like damn i want to know so much about them because they have so much background and then they never get brought up again and it feels like they were really only used to move the plot forward for our main characters yeah and it makes me angry because it's like that's exactly what they did to makoto Mm -hmm. he was only used to push us to love adina more and the fact that there's nothing else for him makes me angry. He should have been in book two. And honestly, if he's in book three, I'm going to be angry because it's like you're too late. <laughs> I've already suffered your loss. Like, Watch it. I've like, already grieved you. Watch it's going to be like, no, Makoto's been doing this the whole time. He's been in the castle. And you just didn't know. Who, who do you think gave you those sticky buns? <laughs> oh, my Thank God. You. I knew how much you loved them. And the fact that there's another wielder is crazy. Yeah. And that could be such a big plot point in the I, I'm I'm talking as if I haven't read the second book. I have. But it could have been such a cool plot uh, plot point for him to get so close to Peyton and her being able to see a wielder use his powers in a different way than Kai does. Mm-hmm. You know, mm-hmm. but no, no, it was just they, like a throwaway character. They got Makoto, put him in a box, close the box, left him on the street. Bury it. <laughs> I don't, have, <laughs> don't talk about him. Fuck. it's so disappointing i'm so bummed but do you feel the same way i do where it's like i know that these aren't hitting as much as i would like them to but i still fucking love these books because i like the characters a lot no i get you yeah i just wish it were different that's I, how i feel about naruto <laughs> i feel like there was so much potential here and i really really am holding out that the third book is just gonna be like whoa didn't see that coming (laughs) are you sure though no i don't know i don't know because i mean we haven't talked about reckless yet but hopefully in if this is posted on a tuesday it'll come out the thursday after but i i just kept holding out hoping that things would get better and it never did yeah Lauren has me in her clutches and she has she's holding out a cup of water and I'm dehydrated and when I'm near her she pulls away. I thought you were gonna say like a piece of cheese and like a string and just like she knows how to get me. (laughs) She's got a mouse trap. Yeah. I'm trapped. I can't escape and I can't stop thinking about these three books. Like it's so fucking ingrained in my mind. Mm. When I see shit, I I hate that I'm just like, "Mm, that's Kai. Oh, oh, that one? That's like Makoto. That's me! She has me! (laughs) Are you okay? No, I'm not, because it makes me so angry that they're, like, bad. They're bad. They're bad books. Yeah. I wanted to give the first book a five out of five, but you, if you go back to our episode where we talked about Powerless, you um, (sighs) pushed me on the floor, told me that they were horrible books, broke down everything that i loved oh my god i'm i was just asking questions but they were so valid queen there's nothing wrong with i wish you would go i wish you would go and ask these to lauren herself oh god no you wouldn't honestly i think there's nothing wrong with asking like wait hold on a minute i feel like if i were her friend then yeah but if i'm not gonna okay, wait as a fucking stranger i'm not gonna be like hey lauren liked your book but it could have been better but i have these questions can you please answer them do you remember when we filmed angels and demand you had asked a question like i wonder why they treated the women like this in the story yeah. if you had a uh an option to talk to that author would you have asked him that I think that's different. I think the book overall was good. Was really good. So you would hate to break it to Lauren like, hey, queen, I did not like your books. I didn't. So. Well, I liked her characters. Wait, hold on. I feel like I've just been doing too much speaking. Did you, you not like these books? You are a yapper. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> do you not like these Certified books? Certified yapper. Thank you, queen. I, I do like them. 
but they're okay. Do you like them as much as I like them? No. You love them in a different level. <sighs> but that's normally you. <laughs> yeah, that really is. I'm sad about it. Do you not remember when we talked about Powerless? Please go watch our episode no, on No, we that. were drunk. <laughs> oh, yeah, we were drunk. One of us more than the other. Uh, okay. Than the Excuse other. me. Then how come you don't remember? <laughs> I just it was just too painful. I repressed it. You know. <laughs> I just I don't. I was so full of hope for the second book after I had finished this one because I was like, Lauren's not going to do me wrong. She's a girly. She will put Makoto in the next book. Hmm. Well, maybe the third one. No, no. Is there? Is it only a trilogy? I think so. Yeah, that's wild. Her book better be fucking Bible length if she's gonna hit all those fucking plot holes. Don't say she that needs- because we have to review that. <laughs> I am so down to read a Bible length version of that book. I fucking something about it. It has me in its clutches. Okay, wait. So you you had said that you were you wanted to give. Yeah. powerless the five out of five yes but then we talked about it and you were like wait a minute too many plot holes and what did you want to give this book i did not want to give it a five out of five i did okay. not think it was as strong as the first one mostly because i did not really like that ending the same as you i felt like makoto didn't do anything mm-hmm. and it made me think of the yakuza games where it was like okay you really used one character to drive to, to drive me to care about another character more. Yeah. That feels kind of shitty. Mm. I think, though, she has such a way of writing dialogue that I really like. But she also does this thing. She does it more in the second book, but she started in this one. She repeats herself all the time with the same compliments all the time. What do you mean? So, Give an example. In this book, it was the fact that it always talked about Makoto's smile. And I understand that is a big thing, but I don't want to fucking hear about, and I almost got that smile, but it's okay. Maybe next time, Queen. It's like, I don't know. I don't fucking care. Like, I don't want to fucking hear about that. And the conversations, they would have like, you said my name? That's crazy. That's crazy. Wait, do you like me or something? Wait, you gave me a nickname? Whoa. Like, I don't fucking people to me. I don't know. Maybe it's because it's in a different like society that doesn't really feel like how people talk. But I also ate that shit up. (laughs) So (laughs) she's I feel like Lauren is a romantic at heart, Mm -hmm. but I don't think she followed through with Makoto the way I wanted her to. Mm -hmm. That being said, I think I would also no. I think I would give it maybe like a two point seven five. If I were to rate it on Goodreads, probably a three. So you would give this one higher than the first one? Oh, you're right. Damn it. Why did I <laughs> score it so low? A 2.49. <laughs> a 2.49. Yeah. Okay. That's so fucking funny. Um, Damn. I just really... I feel, I feel the same way as you. Where I really think that the world that Lauren laid out... I'm very invested in like I, I want to know more more about this world and Charlie and I even looked at the list of the abilities on the first page where you know there's talking about the mundanes and the oh. offensive defensive the list of them the list that can get you killed if you have this power and I feel like there's so much that Lauren can do just based on this you know outline alone that I I really I'm interested in what else she can create. I could see 15 year old me being into these books. Oh, same. And if it were if it were popping off, fucking eating eating that shit up with fan fiction of like these are my mundanes, these are my OCs. I would have been like, yes, bitch. <laughs> I would have been so down for that. Mm-hmm. But here I am. Here I am suffering as an adult. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I still feel like the world she built is still good Mm. i just i feel like the next one is gonna be better it's just gonna it's just gonna get better from here i guess let me be positive i guess let me be optimistic for a second our audience just has to see what we feel about book two 
You know what's funny though? Mm. Don't you remember when we went to the book convention where we could have met Lauren Roberts, but we didn't? Because but we, we did see her talks. But yeah, because we did panels. Yeah, we did the panels instead of the book signings. Mm-hmm. During one of the panels that we went to go see, they had mentioned that us readers we need to be kinder to an author's second book in the series. Because usually the second book in a series, they have a really rushed deadline. Because usually, you know, you want to keep the momentum going. And I'm assuming they only have like a year or so. Instead of a lifetime with their first. Yeah, with their first one. How do you feel about that? I get it. Well, okay, I understand. But at the same time, I'm sorry. The material is not hitting the way that it should be. So, Lauren, I want to be Lauren's friend, but I have to be unbiased here. I think that I would give this book, I don't remember what I gave Powerless. I think that I would give it probably the same as you, a 2.5 to a 3, like around there. Because yeah. it's not it's not a bad, like a really bad book. There's just certain things that I wish were different. And then also it's hard not to think about like the third book. You know what I mean? Yeah. Not the third book, the second book. But you know what I mean? You know what I mean? Like The, the second, next book. The next book. So it's kind of hard for me not to think about that when... Mm-hmm giving this book a rating it just makes me sad to give it a Mm 2.5 i feel like lauren roberts deserves a little higher but it is her first book just based on vibes alone i think she deserves a little higher but i mean we're not that lenient on any other author so i don't think it would be fair of us no i'm sorry i'm sorry queen it must be done i think i understand How Shonda Rhimes must have felt. Oh my God. You know, reading Julia Quinn's books and being like, the vibe is there, but the book sucks. <laughs> so it's what, like it's like kind of missing something so a little bit. What can I, with my million dollars in my pocket, mm-hmm. do? Because if I had a million dollars, Lauren, you know I would take this shit in a heartbeat. <laughs> I would make it gold. <laughs> <laughs> oh my God. But no. It's very confident of you. I would make it gold. Okay, <laughs> casting? No, never mind. I, <laughs> I You're just, like, I don't even want to go through that. I just feel really strongly about these books, and it makes me sad to score or to give it such a low score. You have anything else to say? What did you think about the cover? I don't really care about these covers, mm. any of them. Mm. It was the needle that he was going to gift her. Yeah. bought a needle like why does this look thicker than other sewing needles i don't know she might like it you don't even know what that fuck what if it's just like a stick like what if it's just like a what if he had bought like a knitting needle Mm. and he's like you can sew pants with these right (laughs) yeah babe no yeah no yeah babe the thought was there do that oh Oh. well sorry queen it's okay it just gets me I really oh, wish that he would have tried to save her. Yeah. Fuck. That means you don't love her that much. I wish that in the first book we would have seen fucking Blair like, Rah! and then Dina dies because he she launched a twig at her. Stabbed because her you with know a how twig. She does. Yeah. I wish, it's her go-to move. I wish that we would have seen that and then all of a sudden just seen Blair die and not know what it is. So when we read 1.5, we could see fucking Makoto like, oh, you want to fucking flick things, bitch? <laughs> like, flicks the needle. <laughs> I thought you were going to say fucking brings in a whole fucking forest and just. Uh, <laughs> I know. Uh, uh, it's like, wait, hold my, hold all four fingers. Uh, dude, I wish he would have gone feral. He should be going feral. Oh. oh my God. At this point, it feels like. It's Peyton who's going to get her revenge on Blair. Why isn't Makoto being yeah. like, I'm going to get you, girl? I feel like there's more more stakes mm-hmm. with Makoto fucking up Blair. Peyton is just kind of like, I just didn't like you. You killed my best friend. Oh, well, yeah, that. <laughs> I, d- <laughs> <laughs> I meant like throughout the entire like trials. Well, they were just very catty, so. I don't care. I want Makoto to come back. 
with Lauren fucking needle. Lauren, if you're he- if you're here for some reason, Lauren. Lauren hey girl it's us <laughs> email us at the book fix podcast at gmail. <laughs> just kidding anyway no she can't she can okay please do if you you know need any ideas thrown if you at wanna you want to send it <laughs> even before your arc comes out with the pre arc <laughs> i would fucking love that shit lauren because you know i'd still give it a fuck <laughs> i want to go back in time You're like in here in here is a five i please. fucking love these books just lauren <laughs> lauren hear me out third book it's it's a horse makoto's on the horse <laughs> oh and, my. and you don't know what's makoto yet that. you don't know what's makoto yet okay wait, i'm painting an image the camera pans it's a book but you'll figure it out because you're an author the camera pan starts at the bottom like the horse's foot you see like boots oh man this man is so toned as fuck it, it stops right here at his shoulders we don't know who it is but you see him wearing a necklace and it's, I don't know why he has a needle as the necklace. He has a little safety that top. That sounds no, very he dangerous. He has a little, um, little plastic thing coming in the bottom, obviously. And it's like, it's fucking Makoto. And that's what he uses to fight. Like in, in Guardians of the Galaxy with the whistling thing. He's just fucking <laughs> getting at people, dude. Oh my God. But he's also, but remember, he's also a wielder. So if that type of power is not around, he's like, fucking, I'm going to sew you to this chair, bitch. <laughs> give me like fucking 30 minutes your arm Mm -mm. he's like i just learned how to sell like five minutes ago on youtube he's like i got this what's youtube don't ask questions (laughs) oh no he knows too much (laughs) so the mouth shut that's already the beginning (laughs) lauren's watching this fuck they took the beginning of my book i I feel like (gasps) What if, okay. what if, what if Lauren Roberts wants to make a spinoff series with Makoto being the lead? I want him like in an old Western type thing. Oh, okay. I want him on a horse with his needle. I want Why a horse. I just want him to have his moment. Mm. Is that too much to ask? Oh. Do you think Makoto would ever fall in love again? That would probably be the premise of the book. Him finding love again. Why are you crying? It just makes me so sad. She's like nothing. Five out of five. Oh my god! I still give it a two point five. I'm sorry, Lauren. (laughs) (laughs) Funny how moved we are, but we're like, yeah, not a good bug. (laughs) Mm. We have so many like ideas and shit, and so many thoughts, so many thoughts on the characters. We have to have an episode where we're just in our pajamas, face masks, doing each other's nails, and just writing this book. (laughs) Oh my god! Because we're gonna get sued. No, Lauren, it's fine on Minecraft. You're invited we'll be in the Minecraft server, writing the book together, mm. hand in hand. Mm. That's actually kind of beautiful. Yeah, four eyes, one heart. I love it. <laughs> <laughs> oh my God. That being said, two mics, one heart. Wow. No, oh. wait. We have two hearts. If I <laughs> caught, if I. Caught, <laughs> now i'm thinking about the now i'm not being drunk i'm thinking of the logistics of that <laughs> if i cosplayed anyone from this character i'd cosplay that fucking needle oh <laughs> my god <laughs> what am i <laughs> i mean halloween's coming up are we gonna dress bookishly for halloween oh because if we are this is the book i'm picking this yeah. is not the book you're picking sticky bun fully <laughs> you're the sticky one yeah I don't know. We should think about it. Damn. Okay, Lauren, drop what you who you want us to dress as from this book. Actually, don't. I'm gonna be the needle. <laughs> <laughs> Lauren dresses up as the needle. She can't now you're two needles. Oh, Damn. Fuck. It's not canon. Okay. So that being said, that being said, to everyone who's listening to us in audio form, whether that be Spotify, Apple Podcasts, Amazon Music, or anywhere you get your podcasts on, thank you so much if you would like to leave a rating of five stars it actually helps us with exposure and honestly we've been kind of eating we've been kind of (laughs) eating it's it's been really really nice and i just want to say we're both very grateful to anyone who takes the time to give us five stars to share our episodes to tell your friends like it really really helps so much and it's i feel like it's a very quick quick way to help us out you could have done it this whole time like if you click our name it takes you to our page and then it's like rating five stars that's the only number you can click it's weird (laughs) 
you can also leave a review on any of the places where you listen listen to us on audio form and you can recommend us our next read because we're very open for any horror books that people would want us to read or thrillers because mm-hmm. that is coming up if you want to support us and you have a little bit of money what can they do so we do have a patreon at the moment there's not a whole lot on there but if you just want to wait to let us know that you really appreciate that we post twice a week maybe more if we're able to do more bonus episodes then you can find us on patreon.com slash book fix but if you don't want the commitment of monthly then you can find us on coffee which is ko-fi.com slash the book fix or buymeacoffee.com slash the book fix if you are watching us on youtube thank you so much we post we post every tuesday and thursday if you can like comment subscribe and hit that notification bell that would be great thank you we also have social media if you would like to follow us on threads instagram or goodreads at the book fix pod t-h-e-b-o-o-k-f-i-x-p-o-d and tiktok at the book fix (sighs) t-h-e-b-o-o-k-f-i-x So now we're going to read ratings. We're going to read a positive and a negative review of this book. What do you want to read, Queen? Mm, I can read a positive. Oh, okay, oh no, it's it. okay. No, you know what? You do the negative. It's going to make me too sad. Okay, positive. <laughs> you already gave this a two. Me too, Queen. This comes from Heather, who gave it a five out of five. This book was solely written for the masochists. It is love. It is pain. It is heartbreak. And it is rage. One, two, three, four, five shining stars for Adina. Okay. This review comes from Ailey. They gave it one out of five. And they said, I feel like anything I say will be mean because it was a novella. Hence, there would be no time to deeply explore relationships and personalities. So I'll leave that alone. Though, my problem with this book was the dialogue. It felt like the conversations between Adina and Mac was written so we would quote it. I know it's a book or whatever, but no one actually speaks like that. They would be having a normal conversation and then the switch to Shakespearean love declarations, as me and my best friend call it. Personally, it just felt very awkward. I'm low-key excited about Mac. I hope he kills Kai. Thank you so much for listening. We'll see you next time. Bye. Bye. What the fuck? (laughs) (laughs) Did you see my face? (laughs) I don't even think you were paying attention until that moment. You can't just be like, um, I really like this side character. I hope he fucks up the whole story. (laughs) Dude, (laughs) with his little little needle. needle, (laughs) Dude. Wow. Wow. We didn't even consider that. I didn't consider Hold on, <laughs> Lauren. <gasps> he would go after Kai because that's the son. Yeah. He'd go after Kai and Kai's brother, whose name is, hold on, her, hold on. Are you serious? Yes, Kai and... Yeah, are you serious? Wait, are you Kit. fucking it's Kit. serious? I was going to say Chris. I thought he was your favorite character. He's not my favorite. <laughs> Stop, don't Stop. Stop. I thought he was your favorite. I do. I, <laughs> stop. You make me feel so like on the spot when you did that. I, I watched the episode where you had done that and I took a big ass goal. <laughs> oh my God. I'm gone. It's because I, I like to point my mic to Chelly because this will feel more like an interview. Thanks, Queen. I can't. Just, it makes me feel embarrassed. It's like an interview. Who is she? <laughs> um, so Kai is going to die by the hands of Makoto. How do you feel? That would be so slay. Lauren, that would be so slay. (laughs) Don't do it, Lauren. (laughs)